I am pleased with thy zeal and foresight, and I assure thee, when we shall have brought those two refractory Christians to a sense of their duty, I shall not fail to obtain for their parents a suitable reward for thyself. As Nicostratus was returning home, he was joined by his friend Claudius, who was very anxious to hear the result of his interview with the governor. Nicostratus told him that all had passed between them, after which he went on to give a circumstantial account of the wonderful things that had taken place in his house. Didst thou know, friend Claudius, said he, that the noble Sebastian, the friend of our emperor, is a Christian? Yet so it is. Thou shouldst have heard him speak on the vanity of all earthly things, on the happiness of knowing and serving the true God, on the glory that awaits the faithful Christian in the future life. None could resist the power of his words. All desired to embrace the religion which he professes. And then, wilt thou believe it? He prayed to Christ the Lord, and made the sign of the cross upon the lips of my wife, and suddenly speech was restored to her, whom thou knowest to have been dumb these six long years? And is this true? Then praise be to God of the Christians, exclaimed Claudius. Thou knowest, Nicostratus, that at home I have two children, the one afflicted with dropsy, the other covered with ulcers from head to foot. I doubt not but that he who has restored the use of speech to thy wife will be kind enough to have pity on my little children. I must hurry, therefore, and take them to thy house. So saying, he left his friend and hastened home. In a few words he communicated his intention to his wife, and taking their children, they brought them to the place where the new converts were engaged in prayer. Placing his sons upon the floor before them, he said, there is no longer the least shadow of doubt in my mind nor in my heart. With all my heart I believe and confess that Christ, whom you adore, is the true God. As a proof of my firm belief, I bring these, my little ones, fully persuaded that by your prayers they may be saved from death of the body as well as that of the soul. All answered with one voice, Whatsoever is here today afflicted by any infirmity shall find health so soon as the waters of baptism will purify thy soul. Thereupon the names of all those who asked for the baptism were taken. Tranquilnilius, the father of the two martyrs, was first on the list. Next came six of his friends, Aristion, Christian, Iuchian, Urban, Vitalis, and Eustus. After these, Nicostratus and Castor, his brother, and Claudius the registrar, with his two children, Philechimus and Felix, then Marcia, the mother of Marcus and Marcellinius, and their wives and children, and Symphrosia, the wife of Claudius, and Zoe, the wife of Nicostratus. After them, the entire household of Nicostratus, to the number of sixty-three persons. Lastly, the converted prisoners, sixteen in number, making in all sixty-eight candidates for baptism. All these were accordingly baptized by St. Polycarp the priest. Sebastian himself stood sponsor for the men, and Beatrice and Lucia, two Roman ladies, were godmothers for the persons of their own sex. The two children of Claudius were baptized first, and no sooner had they received the regenerating waters that every vestige of their bodily infirmities completely disappeared. After them came Tranquilinius, during eleven years he had been afflicted with the gout of his hands and feet, insomuch that, at times, he could not be touched without suffering excruciating torments. Even whilst they were taking off some of his garments, preparatory to baptism, he seemed to endure intense pains. Polycarp said to him, Tranquilinus, if thou believest with thy whole heart that Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, can restore thee to health, and grant thee the remission of all thy sins, confess so before all these here present. He replied, I believe and confess that Jesus Christ is the only Son of God, and that he can restore me to health, but I humbly beg only for the forgiveness of my sins, and should my sufferings continue after I am purified by baptism, I will equally bless and thank the divine power and mercy." The whole assembly shed tears of joy at these words of the venerable old man, and prayed that God might grant him the reward of his generous faith. Then Polycarp anointed him with holy chrism and asked, Believest thou in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? I believe, answered Tranquilinus. 
At that same moment every pain left him, and he became vigorous in body as in the days of his youth. He advanced towards the baptismal font, saying, Thou, O Lord, art the true and only God, yet this miserable world knows thee not. All the others, when they were successively baptized, and during the ten days which still remained of the thirty, granted to Tranquilinus in favor his sons, the new Christians continued together singing the praises of God and preparing themselves for future struggles. After the expiration of the thirty days, the governor sent for Tranquilinus and inquired of him to what decision his two sons had come. 